Hello everybody, how is everybody out there doing? We're gonna try something new today and man it's it's off to a <laughs> it's off to an amazing start, I'll say that. I got held over from work for a while and raced home and had to stop and get some supplies for a uh a home project that I'll be working on as soon as I get off of this and so it has been a crazy morning and then I got home trying to figure out how to do this whole live thing on my uh, laptop and couldn't get it to work. So hopefully I got it figured out. I will say this, that I've done a couple short YouTube live or uh, Instagram live videos, but I've never done something like this. So kind of bear with me and I hope that it won't be a gigantic screw up, but, but I'll try my best and, and hopefully everybody out there will kind of get something out, what, out of what I have to say today and, and we'll go from there. So for those of you that don't know, on Mondays, I have a, a podcast that basically we, we kind of focus on positivity. We focus on mindset. We focus on just approaching life as, as positive as we can. And so that's, we call it the Monday Mindset Check. And I decided to try to do a little bit of a live version of that today. And so for those of you that saw the post yesterday, it kind of has the, the thoughts for the day, and that is the weight of leadership and of life. And kind of before I start, like I said, I'm new to the live format, so... <laughs> I'm going to try my best. I think it's cool that people can interact and I will try to kind of pay attention to that. But being new, I might I might miss something if, if there's any questions or anything like that asked. But I will definitely, before I conclude, I'll get into anything that's brought up. So uh, if you have any questions or anything that, that you'd like to say, go ahead and leave your comments and I will get to them as soon as I can. But I might have went a little too broad with my, my topic. You know, you, you add the weight of life at the end of it, and that obviously can go a lot of ways and, and obviously can go into, you know, lots and lots of conversations. So I'll kind of touch on a little bit of why I added that in there. But, but really the, the focus of today will be the weight of leadership. And really kind of an area that I think we, we have to get better as leaders and not just the fire service. You know, this is a fire service centered podcast, but I, I think just in general in life, it, we, we have to get better. And so with that being said, we'll, we'll kind of get started. And, and what I mean by weight is, and, and this is something that is kind of gradually becoming more predominantly noticeable for myself. And, you know, I, I've been a station officer for, I believe three years now, coming up on three years. I've been a parent for uh, 16 years, you know, so yeah, there's some leadership mixed in with all that. You know, I, I played sports as a, a kid and and I tried to be somewhat of a leader then. And so this has been a process of basically, you know, informally my whole life, or at least, you know, a large part of my life. And so, and, and it just kind of keeps escalating. And, and when I became a station officer three years ago, I, I kind of understood what it, what it meant to be a, a station officer, you know, what, what responsibilities I had but I truly didn't grasp the weight of it. And, and I would say even right now, my, my concept of that weight is probably not as much as I hope I will know, you know, in years to come, you know, I, it's just a continual process of growing. But anyway, I, I will say this, you know, when I was a driver several years back, it, that's, that's our kind of top end of the ranks before you become an officer, but you still have the ability to ride out as an officer a couple, like a year into that rank. And so once I got to that level that I was asked to ride out as an officer when I was still a driver, that's when I first probably 
I would say I first noticed a little bit of that weight because it's a it's a tricky spot to be in. You know, I never took any tests that had anything to do with leadership, anything to do with the responsibilities of an officer or anything like that. But I was put in that role. And when it came down to it, if something were to happen, I had the same responsibilities as a officer that w that had been in that spot for years or decades or whatever. There's there's no there's no distinguishing between me as a pretender of that spot and somebody that knew and was tested to be in that spot. And so that being said, that kind of really started my mind turning. And and to be honest, I started to write a lot then. That was kind of the beginning of, of me putting some words on paper. I started writing out kind of my description of, of if I ever were an officer, if I ever become an officer, this is kind of how I want things to go. This is what I want to do in that role. And that, that came from experience. That came from my personal experience. That came from the, the good leaders that I learned from. That came from the bad leaders that I learned from. And so I started putting that into paper. But, but anyway, as I look back, I, I can kind of see that that was the first time I started feeling some of that responsibility. And so kind of looking, of, looking ahead, six, seven years, I, you know, whatever, till a couple years ago, you know, I had been a station officer for a year and I felt like I was doing a pretty good job, but I, I was just coasting. If, if I would be honest with myself, I was just coasting in that spot. I was just the, the fun captain. You know, I wanted to take care of my people. I wanted us to be, you know, I wanted us to do our jobs good, but my main job in my head was just that caring for the people, making a good environment, having a place that we could enjoy coming to. That, that was in my head, my biggest role. And so, and I've told this story several times, but you know, then here comes the responsibility of adding a, a brand new firefighter to the crew. This, this guy would just, just be out of rookie school. You know, the, the first day on shift will be on shift under me. And so that really made a change mentally for me. That was a huge turning point in my, I guess, leadership career, if you want to say that, my, my mentality as an officer, whatever you, however you want to put it, that was a huge turning point for me. And it really just flipped my world upside down because I took that responsibility very seriously. You know, I can take this person that literally the very first day he works as a firefighter is under me. I can take him and, and just say, Hey, you know, these guys are going to let you know what you're responsible for cleaning. And, and I know you just went through six months of rookie school. So I trust that you're pretty solid with your abilities. And, you know, these guys will kind of show you the ropes and, and we'll take care of business. Or I could take that responsibility. I could, I could, take that weight of basically this, this person's career and, and truly make him the best firefighter that I could personally make him. Make him, or, or at least put him on the best possible path that I could. And like I said, that it, it, was, a, it was just a huge, just an eye-opening experience for me how important it is to do my job as an officer, not just be there and, and, you know, make sure all the boxes are checked, make sure everybody is, is getting along and, and we're not doing anything we're not supposed to, you know, it, and, and that's, that's why I am here today. And that's why this is my topic for today. And if you, if you can't tell, you know, this is something that I've 
am pretty passionate about it. It is something that I feel very strongly about because I do feel that weight and and I want others to feel this passion. I want others to feel what that responsibility truly is. And so you know, that's that's kind of where we want to start is I know it's not the case everywhere. I see it. I see it every day. I see officers that are just happy with as long as we're checking all the boxes that we need to check, we're good. As long as we're present anytime that training is scheduled on, on the calendar and, and we get that done, we're good for the rest of the days. As long as we're not getting in trouble, we're good. And I just hate that. I, I hate I hate that we are in this job that we are responsible for the lives of so many people. We are responsible for the property of so many people. We're responsible for helping people on their worst days. And we're okay with just checking the boxes that are there in front of us. Because everybody that's a firefighter, I don't care if you're volunteer, I don't care if your career, I don't care if you've been on a couple years or, or 30, you know that if that's all we're doing, if we're doing the minimum, if we're just checking the boxes that are given to us, if if we're just coasting along that fine line of, of okay, you're adequately performing your job, that's nothing. You know, we're, we're not put, we're, we're not, we're <laughs> trying to think of how to say this, the, the restrictions, the, the standards that we are put under are not adequate. And I'm sure you've heard it and said in different ways. I've heard it said in different ways. You know, if you're just performing up to that minimum standard, then you're giving minimum care. You're performing skills at a minimum level. And why would we be okay with that? I don't understand why the job we have, we would be okay with that. And what makes it worse is the audience that I'm trying to target right now it is the leaders, are the leaders of this job. So, so not only are we responsible for how we perform personally ourselves, but we're responsible for everybody underneath us. And so that means that when your people are performing to a minimum standard and just maybe even barely creeping above that minimum line, that's on you. That's what you're accepting. That's what you're saying that your citizens deserve. And I just, I hate it. I, I wish, I wish that you could almost shake some of these people. And, and, and I'm going through, I'm going through a, a very, a very trying time in my leadership career, I guess I will say right now. I'm just, I'm dealing with some personalities that I just am struggling to reach. And I don't understand how else to deal with it. You know, I've, I've tried so many different ways. I've, I've tried personal counseling. I've tried just showing that I care. I've tried sharing my own stories. I've tried challenging them to, to step up and, and to become more. I've tried putting you know, responsibilities on people. I've tried empowering. I feel like I have totally exhausted everything in my mind that I can think of to do. And it's, it's so frustrating because, because to them, they're, they're not doing anything wrong. And, and that's, that's, if I'm going by the book, they're, they're absolutely correct. They're not doing anything wrong. You know, are, are, they, are they performing their abilities to a the decent minimum standard? Absolutely. I can't, I can't get onto them for that by the book. Are, are they, you know, are they doing anything that is breaking policy that I can sit there and, and hammer them on to maybe create some kind of a change that way? No, they're not. They're, they're just coasting along. They're, they're riding the fumes of whatever, you know, they have going in just enough way that they're okay. Just enough 
that you can't say, man, you are not performing your job. You've got to step up. And, and, and I'm struggling. I am truly struggling to understand why I, as a leader, cannot inspire these people to do better. You know, you, you try so hard to, to pass on some inspiration. You try so hard to pass on the motivation, the, the passion, the drive, and, and all that. And, and, you know, I love Jocko. I love, I love his books. I really have started enjoying pretty much anything he puts out on his podcast. I've, I've never been a big military, you know, war story type person, but I've really started enjoying everything he has to put out. And, you know, going back to his first book, Extreme Ownership, man, I truly believe in all of that. But I had a thought yesterday that came to me. It's like, so what happens when extreme ownership meets head on to the statement that you cannot change anybody? You do not have the ability to change anybody. Only they have the, that ability. And, and that's, a, that's a big statement to me. Because yes, I'm taking ownership. I am not able right now to create a drive in my people that I feel we should have. I, I, I don't, I have not been able to find a way to reach a couple of my people to, to make them break above that ceiling, get out of their comfort zone, reach another level, a level that they don't think they can reach, but I know they can. I know it. And I've told them this. I know that I believe more in you than you do. And there's no doubt in my mind that that's the truth. And that's not just me saying it. That, that is the truth. And so, you know, that's me taking responsibility for it. That's me taking ownership that I am not doing my job as a leader. But at what point do you say, I have exhausted everything I possibly can? I don't know anything else I can do. I, I have people with me that don't want to go any further. They don't want to get any better. And then what's even more frustrating is you may have lots of people in other areas, even you know, other stations, other shifts, other departments, you know, people that aren't on the department, whatever. So many people out there that would love to be in that spot to, to learn every day, to grow every day, to get better every day, to be challenged by people that want you to succeed. And, and so it, it really, it really bugs me that, that those spots are taken up by people that don't want that. And, and there's nothing I can do about it. And so, you know, I, I hope that you, you kind of see where I, I, I jump around a lot. If you have not heard me talk, I jump around a lot. I, I tend to hit a lot of rabbit holes, so I apologize if that's hard to follow. But, but in my mind, it's all a part of that big picture. And, and I'll go back to that weight. You know, our topic of, of why we're here today is the weight of leadership. And that's why I went that route is because the weight I have on me right now knowing that I have tried everything that I can imagine to inspire these people. I've tried everything I can imagine to, to challenge them to get to that next level and, and it's not working. It is weighing me down. It is such a weight on me and, and I hate the feeling because I feel like a failure. And what makes it worse is I'm somebody that is sitting here on a podcast that goes out to potentially the world, you know, whoever wants to listen to it, you know, it's, it's not big, but there's literally a endless amount of people across the globe that could hear this, me talking about leadership, and I'm not even able to truly achieve what I want at a personal level at my own station. And so that even makes that weight heavier. And, you know, like I've talked about a couple of times, I'm, I'm creating a, a lecture right now with my friend, Justin, Justin Mann. And again, that's even more. I'm, we're creating a leadership class, a culture class. And it's like, 
I'm writing this stuff down because I know this is the stuff that I feel I can stand behind. I know that this is, is what I want this, my culture to be. But I am struggling to even create that in my own department, in my own station. And so it's hard. It's very, very hard to deal with this weight. And it's, I just, I struggle to, when I look at others that don't seem to care about anything, I just don't understand. I don't understand how you can just take a, you know, a new person on your crew and not have any kind of sense of responsibility for where you take them. You know, the, I, I don't understand how you can have people on your crew that are dealing with things in their personal life or, or at work that are you know, struggling with skills, you just anything they're dealing with, and, and you don't want to do anything with that. You don't have the, the sense of responsibility to do anything with that. I don't understand it, and, and it really hurts me. You know, I, I think I've mentioned it a time or two before, but a couple months back, I, we were getting done with the training exercise at our, our training grounds, and we have a station right there. And, and on our way back, I went inside to do something. I can't even remember what I was doing now. But they were loading, you know, they had just got their rig back, so they were reloading hose and all this stuff. And so I could tell there was some struggling going on. And so I went over there to help. And these, this crew didn't even fully understand how to, to load these pre-connects. They didn't know what load went where. They didn't know what nozzles went on. They, they didn't, you know, we have color-coded, like our, each station has their own color. And so even the nozzles have color-coded little pieces on them. They didn't even know that. And yeah, okay, those are all little things if they're just by themselves, but, but that's your job. That, that is your job. You, it, it, really, that's the smallest little details of your job. If, if you don't know those things, what do you know? you know? Do you know how to pull that hose if you don't even know how to load it? And so I, I just, I'm struggling right now with, with where we're at. And, and I really just want to inspire people out there to, to feel the weight of what we truly have on us. And, and to, to get into the mindset of, of doing something about it. So I, I want to take a, take a second right here and, and kind of see. I saw some people typing in. We got Chief Soller here, and he said, move along with them. The train doesn't wait at the station forever. And then he said again down here, Eventually, most, not all, will come around and get on board, and, and that's that's a that's a great a great point. And so, you know, we'll we'll go there. You know, at what point do we say, as leaders, you know, I'm trying with this person. I I am putting everything I have into this person that is not stepping up, that is not reaching any other level. So what am I doing when I'm doing that? I'm taking away from, I'm taking away time, energy, and, and everything else from somebody else that may need that, that may want that. So at some point you gotta, you gotta prioritize, okay, another Jocko, you know, you gotta prioritize and execute. If, if this person is sucking away every bit of my leadership abilities and I don't have anything for anybody else, I need to prioritize that and say, maybe I need to take a lot less time into this person and put that into somebody else that, that truly can use it, that wants it, that will do something with it. And so it's a, it's a great point, Chief. You know, we have to keep going. We have to do everything we can. And that means that we can. You know, like I said earlier, we cannot change people. We cannot inspire somebody. We cannot make somebody inspired. We cannot make somebody gain a passion for something. We we can do our best to inspire them. We can do our best to 
to get them there, but we can't get them on that train, as she said. And, and so that's, that's exactly where I, we're going right now. And right, I just wrote a couple notes just to make sure that I'm covering a few of these. I think, and this is something I thought about this morning is, you know, I'm just kind of going through this topic in my head. I think if we were to to sit down and truly try to get down to the the, the real raw bare bones of of the of the problem, it's that we're lacking honesty and we're lacking inner conviction. Because if you're sitting there saying that I can mask up in 45 seconds, I've nobody's ever waited for me on a fire scene. To, to mask up, what's wrong with that? Uh, you know, there's nothing that says I have to do it any faster. There, if, if you're sitting there saying that, you know, that's never been a problem, or, or have you ever had to wait on me to go inside because I was masking up? That is a problem, and, and that's such a problem. It's, it's a problem to the inner self of the person saying that. Because you don't have the honesty to truly say, man, you're absolutely correct. You know, I know that I've not been put in that situation before, but, but what, if I, what if I was? What if I was put in that situation? I don't want to be left at the door while my crew is going inside or you know, if, if, if you only have one other person or, or I don't want to be there at the door getting ready while that one person is going inside by himself. You know, that takes some honesty. You know, it takes some conviction to say, I want to do better. Yeah, I feel like I know what I'm doing, but I want to do better. I want that for the people out there. I want that for my crew. You know, we always hear the, the thought of what if you're responding to your family? What if the people inside are your family? And that is, that's huge. And some people like myself, I live a hundred miles away from the station. So will that ever be a case? I, I personally at my job, I hopefully will never respond on my, well, everybody hopefully will not respond on their family. I'm just saying it's hard for me to get in that mindset because I live so far away, but that is the way you can reach some conviction inside. And when you ask that question, when you ask yourself, do I want myself responding to my family? Do I want myself responding if I need rescue? You have to have the honesty to answer that truthfully. Because everybody out there can quickly say, yeah, absolutely. I know what I'm doing. I know how to perform VES and search and, and pull lines and, and mask up. I know how to do all that. But to truly answer that question, you have to sit and think, is there somebody out there that I would rather be the one rescuing my family? I would rather have rescuing myself. Because I don't think a lot of us out there can truthfully answer that question, yes. And that's where I'm going is, I, I don't think a lot of us have that just true conviction inside and that true honesty and humility to say that I need to do better. And I will be very honest, I don't think anybody out there should be able to say, I am where I need to be. I don't think any of us can say that I don't need to get any better. I'm at the top of my game. I don't think that's the case. And if it is the case, what else is there to do? You know, why would you want to be at that level? Why would you want to think that I am at the top? There's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can learn. I just, that's not a mindset that we should have. I don't care how competent you are in your skills and abilities. It's not the truth. I don't care how strongly you feel about what you know. You do not know everything. You do, or you are not the best at anything. 
There's, there's going to be somebody out there that does it better. And if you don't know anybody out there that's doing it better or that knows more, that's because you need to get out more because there are a lot of people out there that you can learn from and you, you have to get out there and learn. So Chief chimed in again. It's hard to reach passion for the job. Uh, teach, I'm sorry. It's hard to teach passion for the job. I don't, I think it might even be stronger than that. I don't know that you can teach it at all. I, I, I feel like passion is something that you can maybe, you can pass on indirectly. Somebody can, somebody can gain just by being around you and they can, they can absorb some of that passion and feed off of it. But to truly say, teach them how to be passionate. I, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just not, it's not something that you can do. You know, something that Pablo Janir says, and I've seen it out there several times here lately, is you can fake a lot of stuff, but you can't fake passion. And that's, it's absolutely the truth. You know, you see a lot of faking out there and, and it goes so deep, you know, that, that, that can be turned in so many different ways. You know, faking that you're on top of your game, faking that you're strong and courageous, faking that you know what you're doing, faking that I am a senior leader in my department, I'm a senior firefighter because I have the most time on. That's fake. You know, are, are you truly performing to the levels that you're saying you're performing? And that's absolutely the truth. We, there's so much faking out there, but you that is one thing that is very quickly saw through you. You can very quickly see through that fake passion the, and, and all of that. And so uh, ideal edge apparel goal is to always be improving. And that's, man, that is that is the mindset. Always be improving. And that's that's where I'm going. Daily personal growth. And that's what it comes down to. And, and, and when I say that, I've said several times along with it, is I am not expecting daily breakthroughs, daily just epiphanies of, of growth or just mind-blowing this or that. Just improving, just growing a little bit, 1%. Just learning something you didn't know. Learning something that you did know that you forgot. Learning how to do something better. Learning a new technique. There, with our job, as dynamic as it is, as, as many different things that we are responsible for, as many different things as we are asked to do, we just never know what's coming. There is no way that you should ever be able to say that I'm good. I don't have anything else that I need to work on. Skills solid, knowledge solid, leadership solid. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous if that's what you're thinking. And, and it's even more ridiculous that, that you're going to be satisfied with that. And so, you know, that's, that's exactly where we're going. And so, you know, the topic of this started out as, as the weight of leadership. And, you know, you can... Just, just the the thought when you hear that is okay. The he's talking to people that are leading others, so probably a formal leadership role. But no, it's it's not it's not that. I'm not just talking to officers or chiefs or captains or or somebody in a formal role. This this is leadership. Leadership is everywhere. Leadership is at every age, every every demographic. Leadership exists. So, so, and that goes with home, it goes with work, it goes everywhere, you know? So where can we apply these things? Where can we think about the weight of leadership? And that's everywhere. You know, I don't care if you're listening and you just happen to be in, in high school. I don't care if you're listening and, and you are a, a banker or a stay-at-home mom or a firefighter or chief, or a parent, or a, just a husband, or just a wife with no kids. These things apply because we are leaders 
of something, somebody, somewhere, we're leaders. And, and if you can't sit there and think of somebody that you're leading, then that better be your top priority is start leading somewhere because everybody has the opportunity to be a leader. I don't care what your circle is. I don't care what your job, your career, what your family life, what your friends, what anything looks like. You have the ability to lead somebody. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a single person, you live states away from your entire family, you, you don't have a lot of friends yet, you, you have a job that you just started, you have a message to give. And you have that ability inside you to lead somebody. So you have to tap into that. You have to figure out what that message is. No, it's not going to be the same as mine. It's not going to be the same as, you know, anybody else that is, that is logged on right now that listening or listening later. But that's the good thing. That, that's why I have the ability right now to sit here and talk to you right now. You know, if I had the same message as everybody else, what do I have to give? It would be the same story. Everybody would be saying the same thing. And that's, that's not the way it is. And, and that's the great thing about this. And, and, and the, the other great thing about it is that there are so many avenues to use that message. If we're just talking about being an informal leader at work, if we're just talking about being a better leader at home, if we're talking about, you know, using some of the, the things that you've learned from your, your situations in life, your situations at work over social media, starting a podcast, you know, whatever it is. I never would have thought that I would be sitting here right now doing this because this is not the person that I used to be. I, I am not, I've never been the kind of person that would sit here over a camera or over a microphone and just talk. I've never been that kind of person. But my life has led to this and I have been I have taken the mindset that I'm going to sit back. I'm going to be humble and just let life happen. I'm going to learn from what happens. I'm going to take it as positive as I can. And I'm going to just go where the opportunities lead me. And, and that's why I'm here. And am I an expert at anything? No, absolutely not. Do I have it all figured out? Absolutely not. I, I just explained to you at the first of this that I don't have it figured out. I, I feel like I have a good idea of what I want. And I feel like I should know how to get there. But am I, have I been able to connect those dots yet? No, I, I don't have it figured out. I haven't, I haven't achieved everything that I want to achieve. But does that make me somebody that doesn't have a message to give? Does that take away from what I have to share with everybody out there? No, it doesn't. You know, I have dealt with so many frustrations in leadership over the past year. Leadership at home, leadership at work. I, I've, I've talked about this before. You know, just as I gain some momentum, maybe at the, at the firehouse or, or at home, and feel like, man, that was, a, that, was a, that was good. I felt like I'm doing better right there. Right the moment that I gain that, I get it taken away and I get humbled. And I, I realize that, okay, I don't have it figured out. That was obviously a false sense of security. We're, we're starting back on the ground. But does that make me wanna give up? No, absolutely not. I am not willing to give up what I'm doing right now because of failure. Is it frustrating? Is it, you know, shot to my ego? Does it hurt? Especially when we're talking about, you know, stuff at home. Yeah, it hurts. When I fail at home, especially, it hurts. I hate it. I want so bad to be a better leader at home. But does that, want, does that make me want to give up? No. It makes me want to try harder. It makes me want to learn from those situations. It makes me want to take advantage 
of that weight that I had been given, you know, bringing it all back around. And we started talking about the, the weight of leadership. And like I said, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at, you have something to give. Well, that weight, you should feel that weight just dealing with yourself personally. Just the fact that I have to learn how to lead myself. I have to be somebody who leads by example. That is a heavy weight too. Knowing that I can't put things out here on social media. I can't write things down as expectations for my crew. I can't, you know, build a vision of the, the culture that I want to create it at work and not be the person that lives those things out as the example. That's heavy. That's a heavy weight because, and that's, it's accountability and accountability is a great thing. And that is one of the biggest, the biggest bonuses that I've gained through all of the things that I'm doing here is the accountability. Building that class and, and the accountability that I know I better do a lot better job at what I'm doing because I'm putting this out to others. Making this podcast, talking about leadership and culture. It helps me to be a better leader. It helps me to be more positive. It helps me because I want to be better. And if I'm saying that I want to be better, then I better start doing the work. I better start doing everything I can to do that. Anybody can say they want to be better. Anybody can say that they're tired of where they're at. That they're, they're sick of their life. They're, they, what's the point of, of doing this anymore? I, I'm just, I'm miserable. I'm not happy. Uh, I, I'm burned out. Okay, I get it. I've been there. I promise you. I, I don't know. The, the, there's, there are very few things that I've heard at work as far as gripes complaints, excuses that I haven't personally felt or I haven't personally dealt with. Does that make me any better? No. But I know that we cannot use those excuses. And, and that's really kind of one of the last, the last things I have in my notes is you know, what excuses are we allowing to rob us of our potential? Because I guarantee you, if you sit down and going back to that honesty and conviction, if you sit down and you truly look at yourself, you look at your leadership, you look at you know, your, your home life, your, your work relations, everything. If you sit down and you truly look at your life, there are excuses that you're making right now that are keeping you from reaching the next level. And not only that, if you are a leader, there are excuses that are keeping those people that you're leading from reaching higher levels. And that is the weight. You are not only responsible for what you're doing. You're not only responsible for your attitude, your morale, your work ethic, but you are responsible for the morale, the attitude, the skills, the ability, everything of the people that are underneath you. And we have got to start taking that seriously because the lives of the citizens out there that we're there to protect depend on it. My life could depend on it. My life could depend on the skills that my people have. And if I sit there at the station and ignore the fact that my firefighters are awful at forcible entry, I, that's just the first thing. My firefighters are awful at, uh, shoot, I don't know, you know, pulling a hose line. And I'm just making stuff up now. Please don't take it personal against my crew. But you know, if I know that and I'm, I'm not doing anything about it, 
and I get into a situation where I need them to perform those skills to help me survive, that's exactly what could happen. And, and so there's another piece to that. I just said, if I know that, well, if you're not training with your people, if you're not testing them, you might not know that. So, okay, your, your excuse is, well, I didn't know that they weren't very good at that. That's, that's an even bigger problem. I don't know. Maybe it's, 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 as, it's at least as equal as a problem, maybe even bigger, because you're not even training them in any way that you would know that. So I, I, I think just the gist of the story, and I'll try to wrap it up now because you know, I try not to, to keep everybody long and, and try to respect your time. But to, to truly sit down, like most of these Monday episodes are, to think about yourself, to, to sit down and really dig deep, look inside, see what you're feeling, what you're thinking, Areas that you need to grow, areas that you need to get better, especially in you know the the topic of the day, the weight of leadership. If wherever you find yourself with a title of leader, think about what you can do to do better. Think about the responsibilities that you have. Think about the lives that are at stake. Think about the careers that are at stake and truly start putting some weight into that. You know, like the like I said, I, I am passionate about this topic because I feel it. You know, that's the easiest way to tell if somebody truly, you know, has something inside them about a topic is if they start getting passionate that you you, you can tell that they care about the topic. And that's where I'm at with this, like I said, because I feel it, I know it. And I want to share that with others. I want to challenge everybody out there to do better, to get better, to be somebody that inspires somebody else to do better. And so, you know, this is the part of the show where I start talking circles if I don't stop. So I'm going to try to avoid that. But I just really appreciate everybody out there. I appreciate some of the comments that, that you guys left. I, I, I enjoyed kind of being on here live to, to interact a little bit, just seeing people come on and off. I enjoyed it, uh, so I will try to get a few more of these in. If you have not heard the podcast, listening for the first time, it's the Crew First Culture podcast. You can find it basically anywhere that you can find podcasts. And so look me up. I've got some great, great guests, huge names of the fire service, you know, just incredible leaders that have amazing things to say. And I'm just lucky enough to be sitting there talking with them. But there's some great episodes there. Like I said, we do this Monday episode, just a kind of an introspection, just focusing on some positivity, some, some things to help yourself get better. And so if you've not heard about it, go ahead and look us up. If you enjoy it, have any questions, please put some feedback in there, reach out to me and, and I will try to do my best to answer any questions you have or just kind of approach any topics that you want to approach. So thank you again. I appreciate your time. Like my posts say on the episode thumbnails, I'm sponsored by Woods Force Wintry Door Kits and I appreciate those guys. Those are some amazing guys. I'm happy to be a part of that organization and, and I thank them for allowing me to, to be a part of it. So everybody out there, have a great week. Look forward to being back on Thursday. I have a very interesting Thursday episode. I will say this much, so, so look for that. And until then, everybody stay safe and take care of each other. Thank you.